906 Outdoors is brought to you by Race Driven, your source for premier power sports products. The UP is one of the few spots in North America you'll find a pasty. It's the only spot in North America you'll find a natural luge track. It's a beautiful sunny day and I'm in the Ghani for a look at the sport of luge. And a look at photography in the UP. Nine million acres of forest, 1,700 miles of continuous shoreline, 4,300 lakes, 12,000 miles of streams, more than 300 waterfalls, 15 counties, two time zones, and one area code. Welcome to the Upper Peninsula. Welcome to 906 Outdoors. I know Six Outdoors is brought to you by Cooking Wild Seasonings. Make it fresh, make it yours. The Upper Peninsula Luge Club in Nagani is home to one of only five lighted natural luge runs in the world and the only natural track in the United States. The track is a half mile long and features a 289 foot vertical drop. All I know is it's one very fast way to get from the top of a hill to the bottom. This luge track, Lucy Hill, is the only one in North America, and there are other artificial tracks in Salt Lake City, Lake Placid, um, and in Canada, but we have the only flat track natural luge hill in North America. What that means is we have people here that come from throughout the U.S. Uh, a few weekends ago, we had people from Alaska, we've had people from Maine, we've had people from New York, Tennessee, uh, of course the surrounding states, Florida, and this year we've had exchange students uh, with families coming from Chicago um, and Big Bay. And the exchange students were coming from Spain, France, and Slovakia. By having this, this area and having it be, have the public sliding open, we have a wide variety of people that are learning about uh, natural track luge. Make sure your slide is going where you want it when you put the brakes okay. on. Otherwise, you're going to continue that no matter how much you do this or this or okay. this. It's still going to go that way okay. because the brakes are on. The minute you took your brakes off, your shoes up, sled went over that way, didn't yeah, it? Right. Okay. But you're aiming for the snow bank and you continue to go for the snow bank because yeah. the brakes are on. Right. <laughs> okay. That makes perfect sense. As far as the athletes, this is the only place they get to train on ice. When they're going over to Europe, we don't get our ice on the track till the end of December. They're usually going the day after Christmas. So they don't get a whole lot of ice time before heading over for their training in Europe. But once they get back here, they can continue working on the skills that they've honed in in their three to six weeks over in, in Europe, sliding with the Italians, the Russians, the Germans, Ukrainians. Then they also have this wonderful opportunity to build relationships with FIL, Federation of International Luge, kids. For the kids here, that's, you know, they may start as a Cub Scout and work their way up and they decide, hey, we want to be part of the club and they work their way up the track and hone in their skills. Then it's a determination of who has the skills and who also wants to go over to Europe and compete on the tracks over there. The kids have to decide that they want to put in the time and effort and have the opportunity to go spend a few weeks or a month and a half over in Europe. There's not too many programs that I can think of where they have that opportunity. The junior group is from 14 to 19, and then the seniors are 20 and up. So most of our kids here are 16 and under. We have one who is uh, 18 also. It's a challenge to get people to say, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put my effort in, into this. But once the kids get it and uh, they have the drive, it's amazing what the uh, parents can do to make things happen and uh, give them the opportunities that not many people have. 906 Outdoors is brought to you in part by Christ, your Northwoods neighborhood store. The sleds are made in uh, Europe. They run about $2,500, uh, $2,300. 
they are competition, so they're only used for the elite athletes. The uh, sleds got to weigh no more than 14 kilos, which is about 32 pounds. The steels are, are, um, are razor sharp, and the real competitive lucers would could actually shave with that steel. That's how sharp it is. They're, they're razor sharp. And uh, we'll go down to actually use ceramics on the steels to make sure that they're that they get a, a razor sharpness to them. And actually the steel, the steel, if you look, there's little marks here. And the steel from here to here is gonna be somewhat round. The steel from here to here is a transitional area. And the, and the burr, actually there's a burr, we call a burr on it or a grout, a grub. And that, that will actually be a burr that would cause that steel to, to steer a certain way, which we want it to do. And then from here down to here is gonna be your actually sliding edge. And that's gonna be a razor sharp. And if I actually took my nail and went like that you'll see that I leave some of my nail there and then from here to here is a transition again and then from here to here it's going to be dull it's got finger guards the finger guards of course that's required by FIL so that if you were to st start to tip the sled instead of putting your hand here which you could imagine is what's going to happen with your fingers you're not going to have any left your fingers would come here and grab this finger guard and they're going to be protected you have a pod what we call a pod which you see it sit in the pod it clamps you in because when you're steering down you're going through a large curve you can move your butt and it'll hit against that and that sled will actually turn very sharply you have the seat here and you have a horn you're going to be pulling on that sled and if you didn't have something here to stop you you're going to go right off that sled the kufans is what you actually steer the sled with because your legs are up here and as you can see it's somewhat flexible when i move that and when i'm going to make steer i have i'm going to put my leg onto the kufan and i press it down and that's going to cause if i put it to the the right kufan, I'm going to go left. If I put it to the left kufan, I'm going to go right. The rain, we always have a rain. The rain is that if I'm in a, a huge corner, a 90 degree corner of that, I'm going to pull, put pressure on the kufan and put pull on the opposite rain, side of the rain. It's going to cause me that sled to pivot and go through that curve. The training sled, it has finger guards, but the steels are not a good deal, but it, it'll suffice for getting down for training. Just like the other one, it has a pod, but it's not a racing sled. It's good enough for training, for get someone first on the sled, but not good for competition. You wouldn't never use that for competition. I was national champion back in 86, 87, and then the United States named me coach in 19, I think 1987, 88 I coached. I gave everything I wanted and, and it was time to step out of it. And uh, so I did in, in eight, I think 89, I stepped out of it. And back in uh, 2015, the, the United States Luge Association let go of the coach. They asked me if I wanted to coach again. I'm going, my God, I've been out of it for so many years. And I said, let me think about it. My wife said, of course. And so I called back and accepted. It's a challenge. Yeah, it's enjoyable. I work with the most fantastic kids in the world. They're unbelievable kids. I'm traveling throughout Europe and all the different countries and working with all the different countries, the different coaches. There's nothing like in the world coaching young men and women. So I got into luge. I started doing artificial luge, which is like what you see in the Olympics, but it just was too far away and wasn't really going to work out for us. So I decided to come here and try it out. And I just kept coming every weekend until I made it to the top. And eventually I was good enough to go overseas. So I've been there two years now. And it's awesome meeting people from like a bunch of different countries like New Zealand, Russia, Serbia. It's just a different experience over there with a lot of different tracks. We do all the Junior World Cup races, and pretty much every race we can get into over there. So we participated in six races, but right now natural luge isn't an Olympic sport, but there's a chance it'll go into the Olympics in the future. Six years ago I started, I came out here with my scout troop and uh, I loved it. So I just kept coming back and coming back. And um, yeah, now it's six years later and I've been to Europe three times racing in the World Cups. It, it, it's really fun. You get to meet people from all over and talk with people from 18 different countries. I have friends from four different continents. It's a great experience. They represent the United States of America. They wear the United States uniform. They uh, travel and eat and, and room. The, with all the different countries in the world, and their best friends are from New Zealand, from Argentina, from Romania, Ukraine, Bulgaria, 
all their friends and they talk to them every week. And I go, what an experience to come from Marquette or from Appleton or Duluth and to travel the world. Fantastic. I think I, I'm so proud that they get to carry the United States flag. It's, it's an unbelievable experience. 906 Outdoors is brought to you in part by Blades Bait and Tackle, your hard water connection to Little Baby Knock. Going down the track is very thrilling. You go down and um, yeah, you just try not to crash and stay in control. It's a good time. Just make sure you don't crash into the wall, snowbank, yeah. track was built in 1990. There's underground plumbing all the way up to the top and we have over overhead lighting so we can do night races and we also have the Friday night public slide so they're they're sliding under the lights and uh, typical hours are Friday nights from 6 to 9 and Saturdays from 11 to 3. We also have uh, online registration if you have a group we have a, a group fee and we can set up a special time for you or uh, that, that goes for individuals too. I am originally from downstate. Um, so we moved up here in like 2017. Um, and then so at, at, the, at Hakey Lunta that year, um, we tried this and I just immediately fell in love with it. Um, and I've been doing it ever since. It, it's unique. Um, it's a very unique sport. This is the only place you can do it in North America. And when me and my family ever try something new up here, we always say you can't do that downstate. Uh, this club provides most things. You get the shoes with the spikes on them. You get the helmets. All you really need is to bring your winter stuff. And you can go down. It's $10. Go down as many times as you want. The public slide is right alongside and they have a straight run and we give them the opportunity to weave through the, the cones. The first goal for everybody is starting at the maple tree. Uh, some of them, they've hit the banks. Others, they have gone straight through and we move them up. And as long as they're going down in control, sliding safe, we'll continue to move them up the public slide. When they ask, well, hey, can we go to the competition side? We have to uh, go through uh, kids coming in with a, a physical and a member of the club. So more often when the public comes, they're sliding on the public side and we'll put in the cones and we have a near 90 degree turn that they can try to work on. So there's, there's plenty of opportunity for the challenges that the competition kids see further up the track. I came here a year ago. It was really fun and so I kept coming back, coming back, so I paid for a membership. The first year I went from the second gate, which is at somewhere near the top of the hill, and now this year I'm at the Junior Stark. 
Today's show is brought to you in part by Rapid River Knife Works, home of Michigan's largest custom knife factory showroom. From Ironwood to Drummond Island, the Sioux to Menominee, the Upper Peninsula offers a wealth of unique scenery, interesting places, and people. Showcasing those people and places can be done in a variety of ways. For me, it's video. For some, like Greg Kredovic from Scandia, it's through the eye of a still camera. I end up coming up to Northern, uh, graduate from there in, uh, with art design um, as my major. Um, I ended up, while I was there, I took some photography classes, uh, black and white film, kind of learned uh, you know, the basics of photography, really enjoyed it, and then um, just started, uh, you know, taking pictures in 2006, got a digital SLR camera, and just started from there taking pictures. 2010, I think, it's when I started actually selling prints. And um, through social media, you know, I've connected with a lot of, a lot of people um, who used to live here, have vacationed here, have family camps and whatnot, and, you know, they kind of live through my images. And so, you know, and, and the other part of it is, you know, it's for myself and, you know, for my family. And so we, you know, in the past, we've taken, you know, a family day trip to Taquamanon or, you know, um, you know, I've gone just this past fall, I went hiking with my son on uh, up at Bear Bluff in the Keweenaw, which I'd never been to. And so it's kind of a family thing, you know, uh, you know, a lot of it is, is timing, you know, and, and being at the right place at the right time, whether it's the lighting or just nature itself, how it presents itself. I was actually headed on a camping trip and I happened to have my camera with me in the front seat and you know I looked down one of the side roads and there's this dark shadow standing there in the road and so I was kind of driving real slow and sure enough there he is standing at the edge of the water and so I jumped out immediately and of course it spooked him and but I got some some pretty cool shots. One of my favorite areas to, to photograph would be the Picture Rocks National Lakeshore. It's got a variety of things to photograph, you know, depending on the weather, depending on the season, you know, whether it's the waterfalls, the shorelines, the beaches, the hiking trails, the lakes, you know, you throw in fall colors or the snow, if, you know, the areas that you can get to or hike into. You've seen a million photographs of Miner's Castle, but, you know, depending on the weather, if it's, uh, you know, a stormy or if it's, you know, sunset, sunrises, um, you know, it presents itself differently. And so it's, it seems like every time you go there, it's always different, you know, and um, it, it's fun to, to be able to capture that. First time I ever photographed Northern Lights was actually uh, probably three years ago, and that was out at Little Presque Isle, but it was a show, and so that's, you know, always fun to capture. And, you know, I'm out there most of the time by myself. You know, is anyone else seeing this? You know, it's, uh, they're always different, you know, just like, you know, how strong they can be. If colors that the camera is able to capture, it's always a fun to go somewhere different to see how you can capture them, you know, not just the northern lights, but, you know, what's in the foreground, if it's the lighthouse or if it's trees silhouetted, kind of turns it into more than just taking pictures of the northern lights. Just like out here, you know, it's more than just, um, you know, taking a picture of a waterfall. It's kind of, you know, telling a story or, or just capturing the scenery as a whole. You know, my favorite thing too is, you know, the weather. You know, when it's windy and rainy and, and whatnot, that's some of my favorite time to be out, especially along with Lake Superior, you know, and the waves and um, the power of, you know, the water making impact with those rocks is, uh, is an awesome sight. As far as cameras go, with digital SLRs, to me the pictures don't look as flat. There's a depth to them, you know, allows you to buy different lenses. You can get a much wider lens to capture more. You can get a more zoom lens, which allows you to reach farther. A tripod is, is definitely something you'd want to, you know, invest in as well. And it depends on how you're, what you're shooting. Like today with waterfalls, I prefer the, the smoother water uh, look to a waterfall photo and so you need that perfect stillness that you can't capture handheld. Depending on what the lighting is or what the, the sun is doing and if it's a cloudy day like today, you know, I will 
tend to head to a waterfall or a river. You know, that bright sun reflecting off the water makes it hard to capture that movement of the water. With the more even light, it's a little easier to capture something like a waterfall. If it's a sunny day with clouds, then I would probably head to, you know, Lake Superior or, you know, Lake Michigan or those puffy clouds you see, you know, with the, the sun shining. To me, that is like, you know, one of my favorite times to get out to capture, you know, the landscape. And so the, the weather and the the clouds, you know, I guess really dictate where I decide to go when I'm out shooting. To me, it's a dream place to live. You know, I'm very lucky to live here. You know, um, there's challenges, of course, um, and inconveniences, but, you know, I find it well worth it. Um, sometimes you forget how, how awesome it is. And, uh, you know, there's photographers from you know, all over the Midwest, you know, and beyond that come here to capture what we have here. Um, between the waterfalls and, you know, inland lakes, the Great Lakes, freighters coming in, you know, historical buildings, churches, you know, um, you know, beautiful architecture that makes this place unique. But I love just, you know, getting away from what's happening in the world and, you know, uh, you know, being out in nature and, you know, just enjoying the sounds or the sights. You know, and I'm not getting rich by it by any means, and you know, it's, but it's something I like to do. I never thought, you know, just being an average, someone with a camera, you know, and it's, it's led me to, you know, get my photos, um, you know, picked up in magazines or been in, it's, I've had some in TV shows nationally and have seen them on the Weather Channel or, you know, it's fun seeing your work out there, uh, you know, beyond um, just something hanging on the wall. Um, and so you're kind of helping people you know, find place, new places to go and see and, and, and discover. Um. Feel free to join us on Facebook or visit us at 906outdoors.com. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get on the 906 Outdoors email list. We'll send you an occasional email with tips, recipes, and more. You'll also be eligible for giveaways just for being on the list. Thanks for watching and we invite you to join us next week for another adventure right here on 906 Outdoors.